today we are going to extend the multiplication property of exponents to powers raised to powers. So that's the difference between today and yesterday. However, we will be using some of the concepts from yesterday today as well. So let's take a look at the number letter A here, and this will go over the rule that we're going to end up using. So here we have 3 to the second power all to the third power. So if I was to write this out, this would be 3 squared times by 3 squared times by 3 squared. I wrote it out three times because that's what the exponent here says to do. It means I have three groups of 3 squared. Well, the rule from here would be, since we're multiplying terms with common bases, we add up the exponents. So the base stays the same, and I just add up the exponents, 2 plus 2 plus 2. Now notice we are adding consecutive numbers. We're adding the same number each time. And so there's a rule that can come up, we can come up with the answer a little bit quicker than having to add 2 plus 2, which is 4, plus 2 more, which is 6, which would be 3 to the 6th power. And the rule is, since we're adding up the same numbers, when we have a power raised to the power, we can go ahead and multiply the exponents. So we're going to have 3 squared 3 times. So we have 3 groups of 3 squared. So that's why I can multiply those exponents. And that's the rule we're going to use. It makes the problem go a little quicker. <clears throat> well, we have to be careful on a problem like this because we don't see the exponent on the number. So whenever you don't see an exponent, the exponent we're going to use is 1. And again, this it means that we have four groups of 3 to the first, x to the second. So again, if I was to write this out, it would be 3x to the second <clears throat> times by another 3x to the second. That's two groups. Three groups would be another 3x to the second. And four groups would be a final 3x to the second. So you notice that there are four groups of these. And so the faster way to do it is to multiply the exponents. But you only do it when the exponent's on the outside of the parentheses. So again, if you don't see exponent, you need to put an exponent of 1 and then multiply the exponents. Same thing here. We have an exponent of 2 multiplied by 4. So what we have is 3 to the fourth power. Notice that's the same case we had here because notice we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 is all being multiplied. So that's why it is 3 to the fourth. And then you count up how many x's. Well, 2 times 4 makes 8. So x to the eighth power. And that's the same thing you get here. See, here we have a we have 2 x's. Two more x's, two more x's, that makes six all together, and two more make eight, x to the eighth. So the only thing you're going to have to do from here is multiply out these threes. So you got three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. So 81 x to the eighth power would be our answer. Well, another example here, similar, except now we have a negative sign in front of the term. And so it's just to the second power, so it's the same thing as saying negative 5x to the third <coughs> times by another negative 5x to the third. Notice that it is negative 5 each time because it's in parentheses. So another way to write this is to put an exponent of 1 here, and because if we don't see an exponent, it's always 1. And then we take that number, negative 5, put it in parentheses, because it's negative 5 that we're bringing to the power, not the opposite of 5. And it's 1 times by 2, because there's two groups of that negative 5. Do the same thing with the x's, x to the third, all to the second power. So we're going to multiply those exponents. So I can get rid of those parentheses, so that's just rewriting the same thing twice. So let me go ahead and do that. And then just times by 2, because here again, we have two groups of x to the third, one, two groups of it. And so what this makes is a negative 5, in parentheses again, to the second power times by x to the sixth. And so what we can do here is simplify this. Negative 5 and negative 5 make a positive 25x to the sixth power. <coughs> and there's our answer. Well, we get some more difficult problems using properties that we just learned now with properties that we used yesterday. So here's an example. 3x squared all to the second. So again, we've got groups, two groups of this 3x squared. So treat this 
exponent <clears throat> as 1. If you don't see the exponent, it's always 1. So it's 3 to the first times by 2, x to the second times by 2. And so what this makes is 3 squared, and this makes x to the fourth. And when I go ahead and multiply out these 3's, I get 9x to the 4th. So that's what you're going to want to do, is simplify <clears throat> first by getting rid of those parentheses with the outside exponent. Now I go ahead and bring down these other parts, 2x to the negative 5th, and then times by 5x, and then y to the negative 3rd. So all I did is just brought these terms down. And so now I'll go ahead and collect some terms using that commutative property. <clears throat> And so when I do that, I'm going to take the 9, the 2, and the, and the 5, and I'm going to bring those next to each other. 9 times 2 times by 5. I'm using that commutative property. And let's do the same thing with the x's. And so I'll take these x's here, these x's here, and these x's here. Now remember the rule is that you can add up the exponents when we have the same base, and we do. x is the base. So we have 4 plus negative 5 plus, and then 1. If we don't see an exponent, it's always 1. And then we take the y's. And so here are our y's. We just have one of them, and that one is y to the negative third power. So we'll rewrite that one. Now, let's go ahead and combine up all these x's, multiply up the numbers as well, and see what we get. So we can multiply these, because they all have exponents of 1. And so this makes 10 and 10 times by 9 gives me 90. So I have 90x, and then we have to count up how many x's we have. So 4 plus 1 is 5, plus negative 5 makes 0, and then y to the negative third. So let's go ahead and simplify further using that rule we learned last, or yesterday, actually two days ago on Monday, we learned how to get rid of an x to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is just going to be 1. And then any negative exponents, we take the reciprocal. So what we're left with is that 90 on top. And down below, we have a y to the third power. And that is our answer. Well, taking a look at the next one here. Here we have a minus sign, but it's not inside the parentheses. Like this was inside the parentheses. So this means the same thing as negative 1 times by. So we we'll treat that on the outside here, negative 1 times by, and then here we have four groups of 2. So four groups of 2 means we're going to multiply those exponents. Over here, if you don't see an exponent, treat it as 1, and we go ahead, and since it's inside the parentheses, we have negative 2, and then the 1 times by 4. And then we also have the x's, so we've got an x to the second, but two groups of it, so times by 4. And so we go ahead and do that work there. We still have that negative 1 times x to the 8th. And then over here we have negative 2 to the 4th power. And then here we have another x to the 8th power. Well, we go ahead and multiply out these negative 2. So it's, remember it's like a negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, because it's in parentheses. So remember, that makes a positive 4. This makes a positive 4, so that makes 16. So now we have negative 1 times by 16, which would just be negative 16. And then we count up the x's. So we got 8x's here and 8x's here. So you're adding up those x's when things are being multiplied. And so our answer would be negative 16x to the 16th power. Notice that I didn't take the reciprocal of that negative 16. It's only negative exponents that we take the reciprocal of. Well, part two, we'll just be going over some more examples.